a big time match has finally, finally been confirmed by the WWE. This match is now happening at WrestleMania. Which one is it? I will let you know as soon as the intro is done. Also, there is news. There is news on WWE possibly ending a superstar's babyface push on Monday Night Raw. Who is this guy? I think you clearly know who he is. Let's talk about who and why they are doing this to whoever it is. WWE might have spoiled a big SmackDown WrestleMania 33 surprise. A, f a, uh, a WWE superstar officially released by the WWE. John Cena receiving the Action of the Year award. And you got your Raw preview for tonight. Monday Night Raw. Is Finn Balor going to be here? Because he was here over the weekend for the live events. Is he making his return? Is Samoa Joe going to be involved? What the hell is happening all tonight on Monday Night Raw? Let's get straight into the rumors, reports, news, controversy, and your Monday Night Raw preview. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? WWE Movie Maker here, and it is Monday. It is Monday, meaning it is Monday Night Raw happening tonight, and your preview, predictions, spoilers, any type of rumors that you may need to know, they're all here. They are all with me right now. I got the notes ready, and I will let you know all the stuff that is going to be taking place tonight uh, on Raw. Um... But before I get into Monday Night Raw, there is one huge announcement that I said I was going to say uh, or tell you guys right after the intro was done. And this is regarding a huge WrestleMania 33 match that has now been officially announced. We already knew this was going to happen. Now WWE made it official. WWE has confirmed Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker for WrestleMania 33. They have confirmed this match is happening. They both looked at the sign last week. Nobody said a word. Tonight, Roman Reigns, check out my spoilers video from yesterday. Roman Reigns is expected to answer The Undertaker. He's obviously going to say yes at this point. We got an updated WrestleMania 33 card right now. So along with Roman Reigns and The Undertaker, we got Goldberg and Lesnar for the WWE Universal title. We got Orton and Bray Wyatt for the WWE title. We got a triple threat match for uh, Charlotte, Sasha Banks, and Bailey. This could change. We don't know about that yet. Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho is confirmed. Uh, we got the Raw Tag Team Championships, which right now is not confirmed. Enzo Moore, Big Cass, or Sheamus and Cesar versus Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, or a triple threat. Uh, I would say a triple threat. Um, we've already seen the matchup between both of these uh, teams, uh, you know, whether it's Enzo Moore and Big Cass or Sheamus and Zaro with Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, we've seen those pairing ups. I mean, now they might as well just put them in a triple threat uh, so that, you know, it does two things. It kills two birds with one stone, simply. You do not have all your teams out for WrestleMania. And number two, they'll both get a title shot. It's it's as simple as that. You have the SmackDown Women's title right now, which is supposed to be against everybody. This is most likely and most certainly going to be a battle royal which is what people have predict predicted before because that's what uh, it would be the best way to put everybody on the show. And WWE can, the, you know, they can easily pull out a good battle royal for the women. What this also does is it gives more time to <clears throat> the other matches. Now that you don't have a one women's match for SmackDown, uh, you have more women on the show in a match that can, you know, uh, hold all of them together. Otherwise, you're going to have issues. Mickey James, Carmella, Natalia, Becky Lynch, Alexa Bliss, other possible participants. You could have more entering. Maybe this is a way they could bring back new superstars or old superstars uh, participating in the SmackDown Women's title match. You could possibly have surprise entrance at WrestleMania. How about that? 
So that's a possibility. You got Honor the Giant Memorial Battle Royal right now. The two confirmed guys are Mojo Rawley, Apollo Crews, and others are still to be determined. And Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. So right now, the the absolute confirmed ones are Lesnar, Goldberg, Owens, and Jericho, uh, and Roman Reigns, The Undertaker. The Raw Tag Team titles, we don't know yet. The SmackDown Women's titles, we don't know yet. Uh, the Raw Women's title, still up for grabs. And the WWE title is... Well, right now, AJ Styles is still part of the thing. Now, AJ Styles did lose. So, I guess what they can say now is that that is confirmed. So, that's another confirmed match. If you look at the card of WrestleMania, I'm not even going to lie at this point. This card looks spectacular. It looks tremendous. I don't understand when people say they don't like the card. I understand the booking may not be spectacular. But you can't tell me that when you look at this card, you are not intrigued by the participants and the opponents in each match i mean owens and jericho is going to be spectacular that could be a show stealer right we we still don't even know if samoa joe and finn balor are going to go on what if they go on that's another show stealer orton and wyatt great chemistry great chemistry those guys can work a good 15 to 20 minute match if i don't think that's going to be the main event though but they can work a good 15 to 20 minute match the women's matches are always spectacular the tag teams, you know, they can put on good shows. The women's battle, you know, WWE has put on a good battle royal for the WWE Championship number one contendership, which was a few weeks back. They could put on a great one here. Right, and Undertaker and Roman Reigns, that right there screams money. It really does. It is going to be a spectacular match. Would you rather see Roman Reigns and Undertaker versus or, or Lesnar and Goldberg? Please tell me that. Lesnar and Goldberg, the money star is there. But it's not going to be a spectacular match. And I can tell you right now, D WrestleMania, their matches don't need to be 20 minute long. They don't. WrestleMania, just because it's WrestleMania, doesn't mean the matches have to be 20 minute long. It does not. So, really, you can't complain if they don't put on a 20 minute good match. But in terms of Roman Reigns, The Undertaker, why wouldn't you want to see that match? Roman Reigns can work spectacular as a good worker, Undertaker still has everything. Go watch his match with Shane McMahon last year. They uploaded on the, the WWE uh, YouTube channel with Shane McMahon. People can say that the match wasn't great. I thought it was good. It really did. You got the two guys that are now 40 to 50 years of age, and they worked a better match than almost half the card on the, on the show. I'm not lying. Watch that match. See how Undertaker performs. The guy has not lost a step. The guy can move, the guy does not botch, the guy takes his time, and with taking his time, he's able to perform good matches because of the pace he's established with himself. He's a slow, methodical guy who's, 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 uh, who paces and who, who controls his pace and um, you know attacks his opponent with proper judgment. You know, that's who he's become, and it's favored him immensely. So that's why Roman Reigns, The Undertaker, if WWE can say to them, all right, you guys can put on a good 20-minute match. And here's here's another scary thing. There's like fucking 10 matches, you know, that are right now. This is about seven. You got like at least three or four more. It's going to be a little difficult to put all these on WrestleMania. I heard rumors that WrestleMania this year is... You know, supposed to be a legit four and a half hour show. It's going to 11.30, not 11 o'clock. An extra 30 minutes. Which is understandable, considering the matches you have here. This is literally seven. Let me just count this properly. Yeah, this is, this is, this is actually eight. Eight matches right here. You're going to have at least two or three more. Right? Two to, those two or three more are probably going to be on the pre-show. And you have these eight to fill up uh, WrestleMania. So most likely they're going to, and they're obviously going to have other fillers like, uh, I don't know, some promos or, I don't know, the Hardy Boys, maybe. You got the New Day as host. Or make sure, you know, you're going to you're gonna obviously see some um, comedy segments that will take up time. WrestleMania needs to be four and a half hours with, with, the, with the stuff you have now. Should it be four and a half hours? I don't know, but it needs to be in terms of the wrestling and the card. There, there needs to be time for it. Um, I'm a wrestling fan. I could watch wrestling for 24 hours a week. No problem. So this, this is heaven. I get to see freaking wrestling for seven hours again. No problem. <laughs> I'm not doing anything better anyways. Whatever. So that's your updated car. Roman Reigns Undertaker has been confirmed. 
Now, this was uh, news last week when we found this out. A WWE superstar has officially been released. This guy was asking for his release last week. Um, Jack Swagger is now released. He is not part of the WWE anymore. WWE has come to terms to release Jack Swagger as of today, March 13, 2017. WWE wishes Jack Swagger the best in all his future endeavors. So as noted, the world heavyweight champion, the former one, re uh, revealed last week that he had requested his release from the company after being unhappy with the way he was booked. Again, you only leave WWE for two reasons. One is the money, and number two is the booking. The star power you're going to get easily. The fan uh, reactions you're going to get easily. But the way you get booked is the biggest issue right now. A lot of people are getting paid what they need. I mean, the people that are there right now that aren't being booked properly are still there because of the money. I can tell you that right now. Otherwise, half the roster would have been gone. But they're there for the money. So the money isn't such a big issue with the current talent. Money is more of an issue with the older talent who want more money because they know what they're worth. Right? Um, unless your gimmick is as, as, as uh, successful as freaking uh, the Broken Hardys. You know, then... Uh, you could say that, you know, they deserve more money as well. But guys like The Undertaker and Lesnar, um, you know, they, they, they deserve the most money. And that's obviously without a shadow of a doubt, you could say. But Jack Swagger wasn't happy with the booking. Uh, you know, he has promised fans that he, they, he will see, uh, they will see him wrestling, you know, around the world in the near, in the near future. Uh, but he is under a standard non-compete with WWE. So right now, for 90 days, he is not able to do anything. I believe it is a 60, I don't know, 60 or 90, some, some, some amount, one or two months, two to three months, I think. And he's not allowed to compete anywhere else because he's still, uh, you know, in a non-compete contract with WWE, even though his, 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 his contract, official contract is done. It's been, it's been terminated. He's still right now, not able to compete anywhere else, um, or work for anybody else for 90 days. Um, so Jack Swagger, this was going to happen anyways. Um, a lot of people are leaving. Cody Rhodes, you know, Adam Rose is going to leave. Uh, you got um, one of the uh, Ascension. I heard they were going to become a father or something. One of the Ascension brothers. Uh, they're taking time off, maybe, probably, but they're not on television a lot either. Uh, there's a lot of people that might soon be leaving, you know, and now you got Jack Swagger. These are all guys, if you, if you think about it, what do all these people have in common? They were booked horribly. They were in horrible storylines, and maybe they can find success somewhere else. Now, a person who has had full success, full success, John Cena, he's expected to receive the Action Star of the Year Award. So the following was issued today. John Cena to receive Cinemakin Action Star of the Year. The wall to be released by Amazon Studios and Roadside Attractions on May 12, 2017. Washington, D.C., March 13, 2017. John Cena will receive the Cinecon or CinemaCon Action Star of the Year Award. It was announced today by Mitch Nuhasser, Managing Director of CinemaCon. Uh, CinemaCon, the official convention, convention of the National Association uh, of Theater Owners, the NATO, will be held March 27th uh, to March 30th, 2017 at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Cena will be presented with his special honor at the CinemaCon Big Screen Achievement Awards ceremony, which is going to be taking place on the evening of the Thursday uh, March 30th at the Coliseum of Caesars Palace hosted by the Coca-Cola Company, the official presenting sponsor of CinemaCon. Now, already a global superstar entertainer and athlete John Cena is, he has put audiences around the globe on notice with his stand-up performances in films such as a hit comedy, Trainwreck and Sisters, noted Nusaro. With his undeniable work ethic, uh, genuine and charismatic personality, and his already proven ability to entertain, Cena's upcoming role in The Wall will solidify his place in Hollywood. We are thrilled to be able to honor him with this year's Cine CinemaCon Action Star of the Year Award. Cena can be seen in his spring starring uh, in this spring, uh, starring in Amazon Studios and Roadside Attractions, The Wall, releasing on May the 12th, 2017. That's this spring. And this spring, Cena and Aaron Taylor uh, Johnson star in his deadly psychological thriller that follows two soldiers pinned down by an Iraqi sniper uh, with nothing but crumbling wall between them. A crumbling wall between them. Their fight becomes a much more of a battle and of will and wits as it is of lethally accurate 
uh, marksmanship. The Wall is directed by Doug Lemon and written by the first-time screenwriter uh, Dwayne Worrell. Uh, actor, producer, host, entrepreneur, and WWE superstar John Cena began his career with the WWE becoming not only the face of the brand, but a 16-time champion. So now they just talk about his accolades. Um, in addition to The Wall, he has also signed on to uh, star alongside Lisey Mann and uh, Ike Barnholtz in The Pact, uh, which will release in April of 2018. Cena almost, uh, also recently served as host and executive producer of American Grit. Uh, off screen, Cena also dev devotes uh, much of his time working on behalf of numerous charitable causes, which we know is Make a Wish, Susan G. Komen, a longtime supporter of the U.S. military, is also recognized by the USO Metro as a recipient of the 2016 um, Legacy of Achievement Award and recently starred in the Ad Council's Love Has No Labels campaign, We Are America, which is like literally been uh, advertised on the WWE Network a lot of the times. Um, so yeah, he's there's really nothing else that I have for him, but that's what he's winning. He's winning the uh, Star of the Year award. Does he deserve it? Absolutely. The guy has done more things. I mean, you know, The Rock, you would think that The Rock should deserve a lot of the awards, but the guy's been winning a lot of awards, and John Cena does a little bit more things than The Rock does, because Cena's still employed with the WWE. He's still employed with the, the things he, like, he, he signed contracts with the things he must do with the WWE does, right? The Rock really isn't that kind of guy anymore. He's more of a movie star, which is okay. It's, he has he has his own success by by no means is he below Cena, but John Cena has easily uh, become one of the stars of the year. I mean, the guy is involved in one of the major movies in, in a lot of the major movies um, around the world. You know, this guy is uh, obviously a lot you know very very busy. Um, you know, congratulations to him by the way. Um, he deserves it. The guy, you know, I as much as I hate this current storyline Cena's in, as much as I hate some of the things Cena has to do. He puts his full effort into it, and you may think that 100% may not be great, but he makes at least 50% of it great, because maybe the other 50% isn't in his hands, right? A lot of things we can't determine, and Cena, he's done as much as he possibly could. I mean, even with the current storyline, the promo that he gave with The Miz, it's just an example. Two weeks ago on Talking uh, The Miz, uh, The Miz TV, the guy made me intrigued into a feud that I didn't give a shit about. Right, he is able to enhance views and make things interesting because he's given more freedom because he's been trusted because he's worked his ass off to be trusted and now look where he is. Right, one of the biggest draws in wrestling ever is John Cena. One of the biggest draws in the world ever. Whatever he goes, tickets are sold, and he uh, certainly deserves what he's getting at this point because I haven't I haven't really seen any movies he's actually been in. Um, but I've heard they've been okay and they've been pretty good and his acting has been, you know, sp spectacular and a lot of people do say that WWE helps you with the acting skills. That's why a lot of people, um, or a lot of superstars or, or WWE is, 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 really close with a lot of acting companies because, you know, they have that sort of uh, bond. And so, you know, uh, Cena will be starring in the Amazon studios and the roadside attractions, the wall, which will be releasing in the May 12th, 2017. He's got, he's got a lot of movies this year as well. Uh, he's going to be taking time off for that as well. So Cena receiving the Action Star of the Year award. Amazing. Action Star of the Year. Uh, the guy certainly has put on a lot of action for us in the past year to two. Now, here's some action that WWE is going to be taking against a superstar. Apparently, there is a superstar out there that WWE is no longer going to push on Monday Night Raw. And when I heard this yesterday... It was like, this superstar, this guy needs to go to SmackDown now. And the story is perfect for him to go to SmackDown. And he can play this off so spectacular. This could lead to Mick Foley being fired. And this could lead for a new general manager to come in. You could have multiple stories working off of this. Sami Zayn is expected to go down the ladder. As soon as Rollins comes back. As soon as Finn Balor has come back. As soon as uh, all the other guys come back. He's expected to go down the drain. So, one of the biggest criticisms on Monday Night Raw is the creative team, which has faced, you know, which we have, uh, you know, seen the demise of since the brand extension. Um, and now they're focusing solely on a handful of superstars in the main event scene. Not everybody, but just a handful. A couple of months ago, most of the episodes were dominated by Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho, Seth Rollins, the, the fucking uh, tag team, the individual, the two-on-one 
the, 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 the interferences, the promos, it was all about those four guys, right? And fans quickly got bored of it. You know, end of a push. Things have changed slightly since then. And we've gotten uh, Samoa Joe thrown into the mix. And he's looked really dominant from the second he first appeared in the main roster. We also had Sami Zayn, who was also launched up a little bit as well. Um, you know, they tried Sami Zayn uh, and put him in the position of Seth Rollins. And apparently, I guess he failed to defeat, uh, you know, Joe as Raw, you know, as the uh, Raw exclusive paper for Fastlane last week. Zayn uh, was also featured a lot more in recent weeks, but his brief push has reportedly come to an end, according to Dave Metzler of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. I'm telling you, I can see this right now. Sami Zayn's going to be one of those guys who's going to leave like Jack Swagger, who's going to leave like, you know, Cody Rhodes. It's unfortunate. I don't know why Vince doesn't see anything in this guy. Uh, maybe this is just one possible theory. Maybe there's too many superstars in the main event where they can't have everybody in it. So they're going to put him, they're going to demote him to possibly the U.S. title. Right at this point, he's not going to be fighting for the U.S. title. Because that's what Chris, Jer Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens are doing. So when you think about it, Braun Strowman, Sami Zayn, these guys are your major guys on, on Raw. Braun Strowman looks like he's going to be throwing to the Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which is not good. Sami Zayn looks like he's going to be out for WrestleMania. Unless he's also thrown into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Because essentially, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal was made to make sure everybody gets a spot at WrestleMania. Do you think it was for paying homage to Honor the Giant? Maybe. But most of it was because we need something for everybody to be included at WrestleMania. And so let's uh, let's make up an excuse. And let's make up something legitimate like the Honor the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Let's say that we're doing this to pay homage. And every, every WrestleMania, let's have Hulk Hogan announce it, which was at WrestleMania 30. Let's have this happen and then we can make this seem legitimate. When really right now it's... It's a damn battle royal that's worse than a lot of battle royals that you could have on superstars. But you put it at WrestleMania, whatever. So apparently WWE didn't have plans to put Sami Zayn in the position he's in right now. I hope that since they had the opportunity to put Sami Zayn in the position that he was, and now that he is there, and now he's going to go down from the ladder, I hope Vince understood what he's dealing with. And I hope he saw a lot of things in Sami Zayn. I hope he has convinced Sami Zayn that... Or he's convinced Vince, uh, Sami Zayn's convinced Vince McMahon of, you know, how good this guy really is. I hope Vince has been convinced by him now, you know, because I just, you know, with the opportunity that was given, Sami Zayn tried, and he did. Um, but now we're forced to do uh, so after Rollins went down to injury and, and ultimate, uh, you know, uh, taking time off. The reason for doing this is because Roman Reigns then became the only regular performing top babyface on the red brand. Because we had Balor out, we had Seth Rollins out. Then it was only Roman Reigns. So the other guy was Sami Zayn. And that's why he was facing Samoa Joe. You know, that, a lot of the other things. And it's not like he was receiving mainly positive reaction in the first place. A brief push. However, certain factors have now resulted in WWE no longer needing Sami Zayn in the role they've had him for over, you know, the past few months or weeks, actually. Firstly, because Jericho is a face once more. Now they don't need him either. There's a lot of faces and they need the balance. Maybe you could turn him heel, maybe. You know, if you if you need that balance, you know, I don't know. Um, maybe maybe that's something they could do. I don't know. Um, I heard about Enzo Moore and Big Cass, you know, one of them turning heel on the other and splitting. Please, WWE, please. Listen to me. Those guys aren't meant to be broken up, okay? Do you see the chemistry? Do you see the chemistry between them? Unfortunately, you don't, and that's why you're screwing with them now. They're becoming annoying because you don't know how to book them properly. But a lot of the times, you know, there are more heels than faces on a lot of the brands. Here, you've got a lot of faces and more than heels. You know what I would say to balance a lot of your heels and faces out? you got a huge face right now who's being booed the shit out of. Turn Roman Reigns. There's a lot of news that people are saying that Roman Reigns is not going to turn heel. Why? Well, that'll be in another video that I'll talk about. Um, but in terms of Sami Zayn, he could be one of those people that do turn heel. And the taxi gimmick, the, the, the cab driver that... Taz was talking about could work here, right? It's still, it's still a possibility, right? Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, then uh, go call Taz or something on his show and uh, tell him, uh, ask him, what the fuck was the uh, cab gimmick you were talking about? He'll explain it to you, whatever. But the thing is that, you know, Sami Zayn turns on everybody because he's being portrayed as a jobber. I don't want to say jobber, but like as a, as a guy that's not important. 
And at this point, it's it's been enough. And I think at this point now, if Mick Foley does go out there and tells him, you know, you were switching you to SmackDown, it's legit. Or he moves to SmackDown. Mick Foley gets fired over something like this because Stephanie is like, you know what? You you don't know how to book talent. You don't know how to do shit. And now with this, you lost Sami Zayn, right? This could lead to Mick's demise. You could have Sami Zayn get fired or not, well, get traded uh, around the WrestleMania season. Mick Foley could get fired before WrestleMania. I don't know, some some shit like that. So according to his Fastlane review, that's the night uh, WWE perhaps made the decision to end the push. So according to the Reddit, uh, Reddit, Metzler said there were two thoughts on his match. They could go out and have a great 15 to 17 minutes match and steal the show. Or you could have, or you could go with the idea that this isn't the time to do a great match. And that was my thought. And Joe should should just kill him since it's Joe and it's his time to get over. And Zayn isn't being pushed much. So they did they did the thing with Joe. Um, although they their match was, I would say, roughly 10 to 15 minutes. And they pulled off a good opening. They could have done better. Plus, with Jericho turning and Rollins and Balor returning, the brief uh, push for Zami Zayn, which was necessary when Roman Reigns was the only babyface single suit star on the brand, is no longer necessary. Well, he did get a good job or a great job. He did a great job for the company when they needed him the most. It's a shame they don't see him as a valuable asset, which, to be honest, he, in the eyes of a casual fan, he's not. It's the, it's the, it's the unfortunate truth. Um... Does that mean he won't turn out to be like a, you know, like a, a Seth Rollins or a Brock Lesnar? You know, Seth Rollins at this point, he's a hot, he's a hot deal right now because he's he's facing Triple H and he's he's the hottest he's ever been. Does that mean he won't we won't see him like a Seth Rollins or a Roman Reigns? He'll he'll still be a, at a lower uh, stage of his life or at, at his career? No, he's not. He's gonna he's gonna easily become one of those big guys and become one of those money making stars um, as long as WWE as long as he can take the opportunities that WWE gives him which I believe they should be giving him you know, many more. And I hope, again, that they were convinced by what he's done in the past few weeks, especially with Samoa Joe. I mean, you wanted him to get, be demolished. Joe looked amazing in that match. Sami Zayn did your work, you know. Um, and I think you should be respecting him for that. Now, it's almost a shame that they don't see any valuable asset to continue pushing him. Um, now, as, But as the, as the fans and clearly see him and are behind him. So what do you think of WWE no longer pushing Sami Zayn? It's unfortunate. But I think the, the true reason behind it. Other than they don't see a valuable superstar in him. Which Triple H does man. Come on. Triple H is also part of this. Even though Vince is the one most to controlling this. Triple H there has to be some sort of idea. I mean that's why that's why the guy's still on the roster. That's why you gave the guy a chance to be the face of, of Raw for a few weeks. I don't see this guy going all the way down to freaking uh Bo Dallas level. I don't see that happening. You know, um the main reason why they don't have Sami Zayn being pushed anymore is because there's no there's no space for him. Literally and figuratively, there's no space for him to be there's no space for him to be catapulted again in the main event. Everybody gets their time, and unfortunately, I was talking about this in my videos too earlier, you know, the two videos previous. The two videos previous where they should have, should they have more than one title? More than one main event title, or should they have more titles on Raw and SmackDown? More titles to occupy other superstars, right? I don't think it's necessary, but if you're going to continue to complain that the guy's not in the main event, well, there's a specific reason. He doesn't draw money. He won't draw money for a little while. And as long as WWE continues to think that, all he can do is work with whatever he's given. Right? They have to see something in him because he's been in the spot before. Okay? It's almost... If, if Vince doesn't see one little ounce in him, then he's blind at this point. I don't know why he's still running a company when he can't see anything in front of him. But the thing is that Sami Zayn cannot be put into the main event because there's no space for him. Okay? I look at WrestleMania. With the rumored card and the, the matches, two or three matches that we still suspect are going to happen, you don't have any space for even one little match to take place. Another match. You don't have any space for another. Okay? 
I mean, everything is going to take time. And unfortunately, there are pushes that come later and there are pushes that come early. And that's the, that's the reality of the wrestling business. If you want to be noticed and you don't want somebody pulling your strings, go to MMA. Go to UFC. You know, do something. Go somewhere where people are going to see the genuine you. If you still want to continue in the era of pro wrestling, get out of the WWE. And that's unfortunate because what CM Punk was saying is correct. When you stay in the WWE, you're tied to a leash. You you get everything. You get the biggest biggest popularity ever. But you got restrictions more than you do, you know, benefits. Either you go to the indie scene, independent scene, and do what you want without little notice. Or you go to WWE and barely do anything with a lot of notice. It all depends on what your passion is. Is it, is it money? Is it fame? You shouldn't be in the business for that. Or is it wrestling and telling good, great, amazing, phenomenal stories? Sami Zayn is not going to be pushed for a little while, unfortunately. Um, moving on to other news that I got for you guys. WWE might have spoiled, they might have spoiled a big SmackDown WrestleMania 33 surprise. What is this surprise that they might have spoiled? What is this thing that they've been talking about? Well, I got it right here. WrestleMania 33 is edging closer, and although numerous plans have already been announced for the event, you can bet the WWE are going to pull off or pull out the, some of the biggest surprises on April 2nd. Or perhaps even before that to build it up. Now the aim is to make sure that it goes down as the biggest show of the year. So they'll clearly go out in making sure fans uh, share the same view. Especially after WrestleMania 32 received the most negative views or reviews. Uh, it uh, The teases. It looks as if something could be brewing backstage over on SmackDown Live. And somebody from the WWE social media team could be out of a job. Soon after what seems to accidentally... Or be an accidental spoiler on their Instagram account. This is interesting. The SmackDown Live roster was competing at Madison Square Garden over the weekend, which was in New York City. I believe this was yesterday, Sunday, right? And after Naomi was injured last month, the company had NXT Women's Champion Asuka replace her on the card where she teamed up with Nikki Bella, Tamina, and Becky Lynch. To take on Carmella, Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, and Natalia. Rumors suggested that Asuka was one of the names being discussed for a main roster call-up the night after WrestleMania. But it could actually happen before that. SmackDown General Manager Daniel Bryan revealed that at WrestleMania, Alexa Bliss will defend her women's title against every available female star on the blue brand. This is perfect. And you could perhaps include Asuka as the part of the... Uh, of that if two social media posts are anything to go by. So WWE posted an image of Asuka after the MSG event and dropped hints that she could become a SmackDown's champion or for the SmackDown's women's champion. However, as Will Anders Henderson pointed out on Twitter, WWE acted quickly to edit the caption and take out any mention of Asuka coming for the championship at WrestleMania. There you go. Asuka, she said, well, this is what they said about it. Uh, that does seem quite strange that WWE felt the need to delete and then repost the image. And as they as that only adds intrigue and leaves fans wondering that Asuka could make a surprise appearance to the grandest stage of them all. So apparently what they did here is Will Henderson at Will H94 on Twitter, he pretty much said, or he pretty much posted a picture of WWE saying, Could this mean Asuka could be uh, at WrestleMania, and then the, he posted another picture of WWE deleting that post or that sentence statement, and they just reposted uh, without that actual statement. You know, so uh, he said here, so WWE initially teased Asuka after coming after Alexa Bliss, then revised it to just mention she made an appearance at MSG. Interesting. She just made an appearance, didn't didn't say anything about the tease. So she's currently on a huge. You know, unbeaten run in NXT, and if she is set to defend her gold against, uh, and she's set to defend her gold against Ember Moon at Takeover one night before WrestleMania. Here's the thing: two things. Number one, the Battle Royal is a great setup 
two things because this is a way to include surprise entrance like Asuka to appear. Number two, how has Asuka defeated or how how has she beaten everybody? You know, she's beaten everybody uh, in a fatal four way. She's beaten in a triple threat to put her in a battle royal. Now you got so many women and she'll still and, and this is how she'll probably become champion. She will defeat all those women and become champion. That'll become that'll make her even more dominant, and it will add on to her dominancy, which shouldn't be diminished at this point. I mean, she's beaten the likes of Mickey James, right? Returning superstars. There's nobody else we got. Let's put her in a fatal four way. She beats everybody in a fatal four way. Let's put her in a battle royal to debuts at WrestleMania. She beats the freaking champion. So when Asuka actual actually loses, it's going to be a big deal. It's a great way of going about it, and. Again, the Battle Royal, the surprise entrant, it makes it easy for Asuka to debut. Easy. She's the NXT champion. Well, Kevin Owens was the NXT champion, debuted against Cena, right? It is possible. And it won't have an effect on, you know, the status of the WWE NXT Women's Champion. Because she'll just be out there, you know, uh, as a surprise entrant, but then wins. That's an interesting thing. Now, actually... What this possibly could mean is that Asuka could actually lose at NXT TakeOver if she wins the championship at WrestleMania. Because I do not see, if Asuka's going to debut, I do not see her getting eliminated. I don't see that happening. The The events the, 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 the events that could possibly happen is if Asuka wins at NXT TakeOver, I don't see her coming to the main roster. If she loses, there you go. And it's time. She's been in NXT for about a year. You don't need to stay in NXT that long. A year to two is good enough. It's her time now. She goes there, wins the women's title. Ember Moon easily picks up the win. A stellar match. So unfortunately, Asuka will be handed her first you know, loss. But ultimately, that will lead to a next chapter in her life. So Asuka possibly debuting at WrestleMania 33. Possibly before and winning the women's championship. Now, before I... Uh, Get into one major other news story. I'm going to give you your Raw preview for tonight. Monday Night Raw tonight, March 13, 2017. So, it's in Detroit, Graps City. So, the headliner, their Tuesday night counterparts might not even get on this card in Orlando, but with just weeks to go before WrestleMania and the legendary names you know, all over the show... Raw's tag division got top billing in WWE's .com preview. We got the Enzo Mori, Big Cass, or Cesaro and Sheamus. Uh, you know, whoever wins um, will be facing Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows at WrestleMania. The title scene: We got Goldberg and Lesnar here tonight. Uh, on the third ever Universal Champion, or our third ever Universal Champion, is not booked for Michigan tonight, but the man who F5'd him last Monday night on Raw will be. That's Brock Lesnar. And he will be attempting to end Goldberg's reign in WrestleMania. He's quickly agreed to put his United States title on the line. But Chris Jericho, um, Chris Jericho's fight with Kevin Owens doesn't have much to do with gold. It's all about the friendship and betrayal, especially after Kevin Owens told Chris Jericho last week that he never liked him and only used him to keep his own run with the Raw's top prize. Bailey won't be able to count on her... Uh, on help from her best friend to help her hold into the women's championship at WrestleMania. Sasha Banks has now been influential in the last pair of Huckster victories over Charlotte Flair. But the showcase of the Immortals, both Banks and Flair, will be her opponents in the triple threat. Could something spew tonight? See how that works out. The Cruiserweight Championship, now that Austin Aries is finally, finally at WrestleMania. Like, look at the guys, man. The, the, the people you didn't even see last year are here this year. Owens in a main event, or in a, in a, in a main... Uh, match. Possibly Finn Balor. Samoa Joe most likely will be there. Seth Rollins is finally here this year. Uh, Austin Aries is going to be here. Uh, you know, like a lot of guys are now going to be on the card. Cena, well, he'll be wrestling there. Orton is going to be there. Bray Wyatt is in a main event match. What the hell is happening? This is a step up from last year. A huge step up from last year. Now, Neville thought, you know, the Cruiserweight title holder, Neville thought he'd be, uh, Cleared out of the division. And then Austin Aries left the announced desk of 205 Live to become a wrestler again. He took off his glasses. His eyes perfect. Now the King says his WrestleMania challenger will be determined this week. But he wasn't too clear on how or when. So there'll be some sort of way to determine the Cruiserweight number one contender. 
uh, this week, uh, whether it's on Raw or 205 Live. We'll see how that works. Other stuff to keep an eye on. We got There aren't any official titles on the line, but Undertaker and Roman Reigns are fighting over the yard. The Phenom didn't like the big dog claiming that it is it, it, that you know the ring as his. Uh, so he showed up at the end of last week's show to choke slam him uh, into it or in it. And Roman Reigns will be making some sort of claim to the uh, to yard ownership in Detroit. WWE doctors haven't convinced Triple H that Seth Rollins will be back in time to answer his challenge on April second, but they haven't convinced the architect to stay home either. Expect another update on the situation tonight. Could we see Seth Rollins here tonight? I don't know. Um, we'd like to know that Samo what Samoa Joe will be up to in Orlando, and why he's hanging around Owens, and if it has anything to do with that Irish guy who came back this weekend. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the Irish guy is Finn Balor, the first Universal Champion, and he's wrestling again after soldier in shoulder injury and should probably just go ahead and come back to television. There you go. They have an ice cream bike. They've beaten the Shining Stars, soon New Day hosts. Uh, the Big Show would really like a WrestleMania match with Shaq or anybody. Three weeks into WrestleMania, what are your thoughts into going into Raw tonight? I, I can surely tell you this. The women's division at this point, um, that's number one right now that I'm thinking about because... I want to see if they turn Sasha Banks heel. Um, that was on my mind, you know, like thinking about how the Fatal 4-Way could work out because you have three heels in that case in one face or you have Sasha Banks turn heel at WrestleMania. The Goldberg and Lesnar scene we can understand. I don't think Goldberg may be here on Raw. I think it's most likely just Lesnar with a, another promo or something. Um, they might do something interesting because right now they've over-exaggerated over a lot of promos and oversaturated. it. It's now time to pull out some magic tricks and something interesting something a cat out of the bag let's pull a freaking uh a rat out of the bag or some shit like that you know um very interesting to see how that could work uh chris jericho kevin owens the promos are going to be amazing i'm um, very interested to see the cruiserweight championship how that's going to work out because last week's raw was a good raw it was actually better than smackdown a lot of people are saying so this week i want to see it proceed and progress i really hope it does not die down Again, the way I would kick off this show is the tag team number one contendership match. That's how I would kick it off. Wrestling. No promos, please, this time. Just wrestling. Um, again, Finn Balor. I'm going to be looking forward to if the guy makes a return here tonight. Why? It's because I think they're, they may not be exactly, uh, you know, saying or, or advertising his return. They're going to make it a surprise instead. So Samoa Joe Finn Balor, could that be happening tonight? We could have that match confirmed as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this Raw should be interesting. It should be very, very uh, different. It should be a WrestleMania-type Raw. You know, Road to WrestleMania is here, ladies and gentlemen. We are, we are slowly getting there. Uh, let's see what Raw has in store for us tonight. Before I end this off, I want to give you guys some quick information. So it was released over this weekend that we got some uh, salaries, WWE salaries, that were revealed. The McMahon family, their salaries have been revealed. And I'll tell you what their money amounts and the amount they get owed or paid every single year is. So, you know, how much did all these roles pocket the McMahon family? As reported by F4WOnline.com, Stephanie McMahon actually earned $2 million in her roles as, as an executive and performer in 2016. Her brother Shane McMahon surprisingly did even better in his comeback role as he managed to gross a figure of $2,150,000. Holy shit. Besides taking on the televised authority figure role, Shane also wrestled at Survivor Series uh, and WrestleMania, nearly killing himself at both. Stephanie McMahon has obviously been here longer, but Shane McMahon, because of him coming back to wrestle, he obviously got more than his sister or, or more than Stephanie McMahon. Triple H earned a whopping $3,993,417 in 2016. Almost 4 mil. 4 mil. It should come as no surprise as the Vince McMahon heard, earned, the highest, um, earned the highest earning member of the McMahon family. And he drew, this is a little surprising, 5348624 last year, which really isn't quite as much as one might think. You know, um, The guy should be a billionaire, which he's not. But you understand why. Um, but that's not uh, huge. Uh, I would expect it to be a little bit, like, much more higher. Uh, you know, in the tens of millions, possibly. And maybe not, not the hundred thousands. I don't know about that. But at least the ten thousand millions. Or the ten millions or whatever. Um, nowhere near a billion. But that's very interesting. But, I mean, how could you expect any less? You know what I'm saying? Both Triple H and Shane McMahon 
are now set to be in the uh, in a lot of in a main event WrestleMania match with AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. So you can expect them to get a huge grossing this year. But that's just some news for you guys. Two million dollars, Stephanie McMahon. Two million dollars and a hundred. Two million one hundred fifty thousand dollars for Shane McMahon. Uh, Triple H for almost four mil, and you know uh, Sh- um, Vince McMahon almost six mil. Shane McMahon and uh, Stephanie McMahon. It's Triple H. They're all understandable. Triple H, I'm still, con- you know, like, what, through $4 million, the guy deserves a little bit more than that since he's working with NXT and stuff. But, man, Vince McMahon is not doing really good, if you think about it. It's, it's a little low than you would expect. But, I mean, you can't, you can't even expect any more because you can see where the current product is. And if he's not getting any money for it, you can't really say anything because, well, they're not doing any, any hard work in terms of television, in terms of production. They're doing the work backstage, but... You're selling tickets. You don't sell the tickets. You're not getting any money. A lot of people have actually stopped watching and going to Raw and SmackDown nowadays. And there, you know, even even two weeks ago when Seth Rollins was here, there were people reported that the seats were empty. There were the seats were empty. There were there were seats in the front row that were empty. A lot of people weren't even here on Raw. If this is going to continue, Vince, I don't know if he was shocked at this. I, I I'm assuming that he. You know, if 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 he's if he's gotten this response for for a little while with the amount of money he's been making, I would assume that he works a little bit more harder to, you know, uh, possibly receive the pay that he wants. You know, but if he if he's pissed off at this man, that's your issue. So, anyways, that's those are your rumors, reports, news, controversy. Cena winning an award, former champion being released. And Roman Reigns Undertaker being confirmed. Sami Zayn is no longer going to be the main title picture. And your Raw preview for tonight. Your pre-show. Um, your updated WrestleMania card. And your WWE salaries. Again, Vince, if you want to do better, work harder, man. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, those are your rumors, reports, news, controversy. For Monday, March 13th, 2017. I will see you tonight on Twitter for Raw. Hopefully that's great. SmackDown tonight, absolutely st- uh, amazing. We got a good packed week of wrestling th- to go through. Uh, it's supposed to be fucking snowing in Chicago and Toronto. You're going to get a, lot, like a huge f- fucking snowstorm. I uh, hope you guys are safe for that. Uh, I know, man. Like We get summer temperatures at times, and then we get like freaking winter temperatures. But really, you can't say anything about that because this shit has been going on for fucking years. Uh, that is all I have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Your raw preview in this show. I'll get you. I'll get you uh, with your raw uh, review tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. All right, guys. I will see you later. Peace out.